Hi people, I'm the Average Scott Consumer and today I've just received the Xbox Series X. So before we begin, if you like this video and you find it helpful then please hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel for some more personal and home and kitchen technology videos. As you've seen at the start of the video and in the top left hand corner there, this obviously took quite a heavy hit before it arrived at my doorstep so I was a little bit worried about that. But thankfully the Xbox inside was completely fine and it is well protected but it was quite worrying when I first seen it at the door. So when you open the box, it's presented in a really nice way with this Power Your Dreams card on the front and it makes it feel really special like you've got a really premium piece of kit. And obviously be careful when you take it out of the box because you really don't want to drop it. And in the box you get a little setup card, it's really simple, basically plug it in, the HDMI, the power cord and the batteries into the controller. You then have this little area where it keeps the cables, the instructions and the controller with the batteries. And with the controller, it's not the biggest difference between this and the previous one on the Xbox One but the main difference being is the share button in the middle and also there's a lot of subtle small differences like the controller's a little bit smaller and the D-pad is different as well and you also have this textured grip feel on the bottom and on the triggers. So when you start to unwrap the Series X and you get a glimpse of that grill on the top with the green paint and the inside of the circles, it looks really, really good. And it gets you excited about what's to come. And when you get it in your hands, it's actually not as big as I expected it to be. Obviously the size and the actual shape of it could be an issue for certain TV units and I'll touch on that in a little bit but I did expect it to be quite a bit bigger but it does look amazing. It's very simple obviously this cuboid but it looks great. It won't look as great if you have it on the side but standing up it really does look good. So the ports on the back have changed from the previous generation, you now only have one HDMI port which for me is a little bit of a letdown because I did use this to watch my TV on as well. So I had my TV box going to the HDMI in and then passing through the Xbox to the TV. So now I have to switch between HDMI's on my TV depending on if I want to play the Xbox or watch TV. It's not the biggest issue but I would have liked it to have been here. As I said before, the size and the shape could be an issue and this is definitely too big for my TV unit if it's laid on the side. So I've had to compromise and set it upright at the side of the unit. I would say it actually looks okay but it's still annoying and it could be an issue for a lot of people if you've not got the space either side and it doesn't fit in the unit itself. And also with these holes on the bottom, these need to be clear and because I'm sitting on a carpet, I've had to sit it on coasters to raise it off the carpet because I think for cooling, the air comes up through the bottom and then gets expelled through the top. So these holes on the bottom really need to be clear, so that's why I've had to raise it. 
The setup process is pretty simple although it's time consuming and when you turn it on you get a code on the screen you then sign in to the Xbox app on your mobile phone and type the code in this links your account and registers the Xbox to your account and it then starts an update process and this could be quite a big download so it could take a little while and you'll then have to download your games which will take a long time depending on how many you have When the main update is complete, you then have to update your controller, which I've skipped for the purposes of this video. After that, you're asked if you want to keep the 4K TV settings if it recognises a 4K TV is connected, so you want to keep that at yes. And then you're ready to go. And one of the first things you'll notice is how quick and responsive it is. Now, I had the Xbox One X and even this is night and day in comparison to how quickly you can navigate through the menus without any real lag or slowdown and I presume this is because of the massive upgrade in the hard drive that's in this box compared to the previous generation. And as you can see, like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it tells you in the top left corner that the game is optimised for Series X and S, so that's good to know what will be taking advantage of this new console. It's also worth checking in the display settings that the Xbox recognises that your TV is 4K and that you're getting things like 60 frames per second and HDR just to make sure everything is set up properly. You can also calibrate your TV and calibrate it for HDR as well and if you go into this video mode setting you can change the setting to auto HDR which applies HDR to non HDR games so it could be older games that don't have HDR and it will make them look better and more vibrant and the colours better as well. If you don't have Xbox Game Pass Ultimate then now is definitely the time to get it. As you see here, these four games, uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, the two Ori games and Hellblade, I've not played any of these and I've downloaded them all from Game Pass. Jedi Fallen Order is obviously now available with EA Play, which is part of Game Pass, which is an excellent deal, so it's really worth it. And if you look at it here, there's a lot of games on EA Play alone that you can download for free, part of Game Pass. So to properly test out the Series X, I bought Watch Dogs Legion and this game really is impressive. It has been optimised for Series X and everything looks better. Not only are the load times much shorter and almost non-existent when it comes to the menus and fast travel, but ray tracing is really a big feature here. It generally makes everything look that little bit better, but one of the most noticeable times is in reflections, and there's reflections everywhere in this game. There's a lot of puddles and there's a lot of shiny surfaces, and this is St Pancreas Station in London, and the reflections on the floor just look amazing. Another big feature of the Series X and S is the Quick Resume feature and this is great if you want to play multiple games at the same time. As you can see here I've went from Watch Dogs Legion which was on the disc to Ori and the Blind Forest which I'd already started previously and you see the Quick Resume logo up on the top right hand corner and then it goes straight into the game where you left off and you can do this with any game I don't know what the maximum amount of games is but I'm switching between 4 games here and it maybe only takes about 10 seconds to get right back into the game where you left off and after Ori I then switch to Hitman which actually performs better on the Series X than it did on the Xbox One X. Before this, you could only set it to high frame rate or high quality graphics, but with the Series X, you can set them both at the highest quality at the same time. 
and that's impressive because it's a game that's never been optimised for the Series X. The box is just doing all the work for you. So that's my first impressions of the Series X. As I said, it's going to be a really nice upgrade over the normal Xbox One and even the Xbox One X. But as I said, the size issue and the shape could be a bit of a stumbling block depending on how much space you have in your living room and your TV unit. But other than that, it looks great, it performs great and it's only going to get better from here. I'm the Average Scott Consumer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.